Hey everyone, today we're gonna turn this into something like this, hopefully. I am all about pedestal tables and simple shapes right now, so when I saw the Willy side table from Crate and Barrel, it really struck me. The price also struck me as it costs a cool $549, and that's before shipping and taxes. I like making stuff, and I needed a side table, so I was like, I can definitely make that. The original table was designed by Leanne Ford, and it's made up of a conical base with a simple round tabletop. I tried to match the original dimensions as closely as possible, as I wanted to get the right proportions. The first task was to remove the weighted base of the traffic cone. I used an electric knife because I don't own a jigsaw. It was difficult and I don't recommend it. Using a box cutter helped. To make sure I was cutting across straight, I followed a thin seam that was already in the cone as a guide. You can kind of see it here. Then I double checked my measurements and I went back outside to cut the top of the cone off. I used the top edge of the reflective tape as a guide. Now that it's done, I kind of wish I had cut it a couple of inches shorter, but oh well. Then I had to remove all the reflective tape from the cone before I could prime it. So I knew that the thickness of the cone on its own wouldn't be enough surface for me to glue the tabletop to. I had to think of a way to fill the top of the cone with something that the adhesive on the underside of the table would be able to stick to. I decided to use spray foam. It had worked really well that one time we had a slug invasion back when we lived in England, so I was sure it would get the job done this time as well. Adding the foam plug would have to be done in a couple of stages. First, I flipped the cone over so it was top down, and I put it on a thick piece of paper so that it would catch any foam that escaped. Then I sprayed the foam into the bottom and let it dry overnight. The next day, I cut away the excess foam with a box cutter. Since I had created like a plug in the cone, I could now add foam from the top this time. The nozzle had gotten a little clogged, so that's why the foam is coming out in such a weird thin stream here. While I waited for the foam to dry, I went on to prime the cone. Since the cone is made out of plastic, I decided to use my usual Zinsser bin shellac primer. I opted for the shellac instead of a normal water-based one because it's what I normally use when I paint anything made out of laminate. Finally, after waiting another day, the foam plug was finally fully cured. I cut off all the excess and made sure it was level. So the other thing I want to, the other important component to this table is obviously the tabletop. Let's talk about that for a second. It was really, really difficult to find a 16 inch diameter, about one inch thick piece of wood, piece of anything where I live. That's because I live in the middle of nowhere, essentially. Also, online shopping in Canada isn't great. But anyways, what I ended up doing is I ended up ordering these from Amazon as a workaround. My plan was to glue all three of them together to make up about an inch and a half thickness. Today on a whim, I decided to take a stroll at HomeSense, Home Goods if you're in the States, same thing. And I looked to my right when I walked in and the first thing I saw was this. No. No, oh my God, what? <laughs> A 16 inch, one inch thick cutting board on feet, $35. I think we're gonna be able to progress well with the project now. This is exactly what I needed. I just gotta take these legs off and we are good to go. Let's get going. If you're in the States, you shouldn't have that much of a problem. Similar pieces of wood are sold at Home Depot.
Now that the iron feet thingies were off, it was back to priming. This time though, I'm using normal water-based primer since the tabletop is just regular solid wood. I primed mainly because I wanted to be sure to fully cover all the brown from the wood tone. I didn't want any of that coming through. Finally, it was time to plaster. First, I plastered the cone. You have to be careful to not pile on too much in one spot though, or it'll slide down as it dries. There were definitely a few areas I needed to fix because I made that mistake. But overall, in general, the plaster stuck really well to the primed surface. Then I plastered the top piece and let everything dry for several hours. Okay, so the plaster dried overnight and I was just looking at the original and it looks less like a frosted cake than mine does. You could definitely leave it like this, I think. But I am going to take some sanding paper to this and kind of sand off those like peaks because I want it to be a little smoother looking uh, and take down the texture a little bit. After sanding, the next step was to paint everything. I chose the color Off-White by Bear in the matte finish. It's basically a yellow toned white, kind of like a warm putty color. Now all that was left was to attach the tabletop to the base. I used this construction adhesive that's compatible with several different types of surfaces, including foam. This is really important because some glues will actually eat through foam. Once the tabletop was in position, we checked to see if it was level before placing weights on it for around 24 hours. And this is the final result. This table was really fun to make and it turned out exactly how I hoped it would. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more videos like this one, then be sure to subscribe and follow me on Instagram. Bye! Thanks for watching!